it, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, a wonderful day is coming. Uh, a glorious day is coming. Uh, a brighter day is coming. Uh, Hello, on behalf of Pastor Gordon, welcome to the YouTube channel of Berean Vaughn, aka Pinnacle Church. We trust that the message you will hear today will be a blessing to you, and we encourage you to hit the thumbs up icon to like this video and even share it with someone else. If you are not already a subscriber, feel free to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss another one of our videos. Enjoy the message and be blessed. Hallelujah, praise God. When we all get to heaven, hallelujah. Uh, the book of Revelation, just one word, one last verse that wasn't read that I added after. Uh, verse 9, verse 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Red letters, that's Jesus talking. Say, the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And verse 9 says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion, companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Greetings again, brethren, to all of you here, to all of you online. I'm speaking uh, very uh, quickly, briefly. <laughs> from the word of God and from the subject, uh, strength for today, confidence and courage for tomorrow. Um, this book of Revelation, as you know, is uh, it's often compared to some of the other books in the Bible. It's compared to uh, Daniel. It's compared to Ezekiel. Um, it's compared to them because of its tone, because of the content that, it's cover that it covers. Uh, it covers end times. It covers prophecy. And uh, Revelation and Daniel and Ezekiel tends to fall into that category uh, sometimes. Uh, but there's a slight difference because, or maybe a major difference, because uh, Revelation stands out as one of the most powerful books in the Bible uh, for a few reasons. And one of the reasons is that it goes deeper. It goes deeper in terms of the graphic nature, um, the powerful nature, the vivid nature of the imagery that it describes. And it goes a little bit further in terms of the language that it uses uh, to get us ready, to tell us that we need to get ready, praise God, uh, for the end times that are coming. Hallelujah. Somebody say, get ready. Get ready. We ought to get ready. Uh, and so it, gets, it goes deeper. It goes deep into it. It goes really, really deep uh, into it, and it goes further. And, and, and because of that, it has these themes. It does have the theme of... <clears throat> Uh, symbolism, it does have the theme of a uh, prophecy, but it also, uh, Brother Ron, has the theme of an apocalyptic nature. And it's scary, Pastor Mark, because sometimes people don't like to read it because they see the apocalyptic nature and we run from it. <laughs> Praise God. We might want to read Daniel. We might want to read Ezekiel because the nature of those books are different, but revelation is still there because God has something to say to us. Praise God. There are two things I want to call out and highlight in the book of Revelation. Number one is that God is speaking to us and he, he, he gives us this book. It's different from Daniel. It's different from Ezekiel as a method of preparation. He wants us to be prepared, Pastor McCullough. He wants us to be ready. The Bible says that Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. No man knows the day, no man knows the hour, but yet still God says, I want you to be prepared. And so he goes hard in the book of Revelation. He goes deep in the book of Revelation. He gives us all the details, the insights, the knowledge, Sister Nordia. He tells us, outlines everything that is going to happen because God wants us to be ready. I'm here to tell you that in all that you're doing, in all that you're getting, in all that you're doing in life, please make sure that you are ready when the time comes. Hallelujah. In all my getting, get my education. In all my getting, have some fun. Please go out there and eat some ice cream after this. Go to the park, enjoy yourself. Get married and give in marriages. 
have your children, live your life, matriculate, go here, there in the universities, uh, go, grow up, get old, do all the things that you need to do, you want to do, the desires in your heart according to what God says is right, but please get ready. Y'all not hearing me this morning. In everything that you're doing, make sure you're ready. And don't just get ready, stay ready. Y'all not hearing me. I said, get ready and stay ready. I don't know when he's coming, uh, but he's coming. The, the Bible, sister uh, Rodney, the Bible tells us that all of these books that we're hearing, Jesus says, the, the, the Bible says that the soul that sinneth, it, it dies. Jesus says, I'm coming like a thief in the night. Praise God. And all of these scriptures are warning, but Revelation is telling you that the time is at hand. Lord have mercy. Pastor Mark, we don't need Sister Tanya. I don't need any more signs than to see what is going on. Y'all are hearing me. I, I, I don't need to. I just need to turn on the news for one minute. The first report, one minute, and I know that the time. Y'all are hearing me this morning. I know that the times are at hand. In the latter days, perilous times shall come. I, 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 we're living in perilous times when men are lovers of themselves. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. And they take unto them uh, 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 teachers because they have itching. Y'all not hearing me. They want to hear what they want to hear. And when you give them the truth, they don't want to hear the truth. And Jesus says, yes, sir. Amen. And Jesus says, I, I, I am him that was dead. Woo! And yet live it. I'm alive and I live forevermore. And he comes to John and he says, Write, John, for these words are faithful huh? and they are true. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care what they show you. I don't care how they have convinced you. These words are faithful. Get ready. Praise God. Get ready. Stay ready. Walking out of here, I'm going to be ready. Y'all not hearing me? Going to my bed, I'm going to be ready. Lord have mercy. Waking in the morning, I'm still going to be ready. Pastor not there, I'm still going to be ready. Sister not there, I'm still going to be ready. Not in service, I'm still ready. To meet Jesus. And so he goes hard, he goes deep. He explains it, he outlines it, and he says, read this because this is what is going to happen. Uh, number two, he, the second thing that I realize is that, and this differentiates it, um, brother, brother Kevin, from uh, all the other books, is that uh, not only does he uh, get us ready, but he, he directs it at a certain people, group of people. It's very directed, Sister Sharon. It's very directed. You know, some of the other books, you can say, well, uh, you can argue. You know, people will argue and say, oh, they were talking to the Hebrews or they were talking to the Jews or the times that they were talking about. But God says, all right, I'm going to put Revelation in the last book. I'm going to make it the last book in the Bible. I'm going to make this the last word. And I want you to understand that that this is directed at the church. Hello, somebody. Now, in the world, there are three things. First, uh, Corinthians uh, 10.32 tells us that there is the Jews, there are the Gentiles, and then there is the church. You miss what I'm saying to you. There are the Jews, the Gentiles, and then there are the church. You miss what I'm saying to you. There is the Jews and the Gentiles, and then there is me. You're still what I am still. There is the Jews and the Gentiles, but I am a part of the church, and John, Jesus says, write these words words unto the church. There are some times when you come to church and I say, boy, I wish so-and-so was here. Y'all not saying amen. Pastor preaching good. I wish so-and-so was here to hear this. Uh, so-and-so missed the word this morning. Y'all not saying amen. Y'all not, not saying amen. You, you say, oh my God, that word was for you. And John says, no, no mistaken. This word is for you. This word is for you. This word is for you. Praise God. Anybody that names the name of Jesus. Hello, somebody. Anybody talking about heaven is my home. Y'all not hearing me. Anybody that talking about I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. And look upon his face. John says, I've got a message for you. It's not for the Jews. It's not for anybody. This is for the church. There are some things that you hear about them. 
and you say, okay, I heard about that. There are some things that you see by the way, but this one come to your address. Yes. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Yes. This one postmark, earmark, express coming yes. to me. Yes. I need you, I need you to be ready. I need you to stay ready. And so God wants us to stay ready. It's directed at me. It's directed at me. I, I love my sister, but this message is for me. Woo! I love my brother, but this message is for me. Praise God. Not grandma. <laughs> uh, Mother Wilson, praise God. Blessings. Amen. Not for grandpa. Not for daddy, not for mommy, not for the adults, not for the ones who are so righteous, not for the ones who are jumping on the prayer line. Praise God. This message is for me. Hallelujah. This one is for everybody. Everybody has to get this message. Hallelujah. You know, you know the problem is that trouble, trouble don't discriminate. Mm. I wish I could talk to somebody. Tr trouble don't discriminate. You understand? It's sister Norda, the devil goes about seeking. Hallelujah. I, I, and so God says, I've got a message for everybody. Hell is trying to take you out of heaven. You're not hearing what I'm... Hell is trying to put roadblocks. Hell is trying to... I wish I had somebody who know that every time you wake up, hell is putting something uh, in your way. Hell is trying to set you up. Uh, hell is trying to take you, to distract you. Jesus says, I've got something for you. I, I'm coming. And, and, so, and so John is writing uh, the, the scripture, and uh, it's important for us to understand this uh, and understand why it is presented in such a vivid language and why it's so frightening, uh, because it will tend to get us to avoid reading the scriptures sometimes, uh, uh, but we have to read it uh, because God put something in there for us to see, and we'll avoid it not because uh, it is too long, we don't avoid it because we don't understand it. We don't avoid it because the theological concepts are too deep because we read other books and uh, uh, that we don't understand anyway. We really avoid it uh, because we're trying to avoid something that is coming. Y'all not hearing uh, what I'm saying to you, but, but I'm telling you that the inevitable is inevitable. And when God says it, if God says it, I might as well say, you know something, God said something is going to happen uh, I might as well get myself, Lord have mercy. I might as well get myself in line. I might as well get myself ready. What hell wants you to do is to go into Revelation and read about all the beasts and then your heart is filled with fear and your heart is filled with fear and you start the book. How many people can say amen? But you read to chapter 4, 5 or 6 and you do not finish the book because your heart... Is filled with fear. And I tell you, Brother Ron, it is a plan of the enemy, a plot of the enemy, Sister Sharp. It's a device that the enemy uses uh, to use fear to cut you down from what God has for you. My God. It, it is, Pastor Mark, it is a plan of fear. It is an attack of fear. He uses fear uh, to lock certain doors in our face. And, and when God has opened the door, I'm afraid uh, to walk through the door uh, because the enemy says, uh, I'm going to tell you what is going to happen to you uh, when you go through the door. Let me tell you how the enemy works. He uses something called preemptive fear. Preemptive fear. And preemptive fear, Deacon, is something that is happening right now. What they do is, they will do something to somebody, and then they'll show you, look at what happened to that person. Yeah. And he'll tell you that, well, the servant got all their life, but look at what happened to them. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Yeah. He'll show you... He'll show you that this happened to them and that happened to them and all of this thing happened to them. And it's preemptive fear. And now you are afraid to step out. That's why the, the Christians, Sister Nordia, are facing the biggest battle right in the Western world than anybody else. Lord have mercy. 
They put all the other groups on TV, Pastor Mark, and they say, oh, they, they, they uh, tattoo their uh, buildings, and they, I'm not calling any names. They put all of these things on their building, and they said there's this phobia over there, and that phobia over there, and that phobia over, here, over there, but nothing for the Christian. And when the Christian rises up and says something, that the Bible says, no, this is wrong. Lord, have mercy. The, the, Bible, the Bible says, no, this is wrong. You can't do this. They have an attack system already against them. And they say, look at what happened to that person. <laughs> You're not hearing me. Isn't that what Jezebel said to Elijah? If I don't make your life like one of these prophets. And Elijah was in fear. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Am I in church this morning? And not only was he in fear, he ran into a cave. The mighty man. Praise God. Call on fire. fire. And she just said, if if the gods do this to me, if I don't do your life like one of these prophets, just a word, Sister Rodney, just a word. And hell has been preaching a word into our heads for too long. And we're sitting down in fear. He used fear with John. J- John, this is John, Sister Elsa, that we believe is the same apostle. We believe that. We're not 100% sure, but we believe that. We're going we're gonna to go with that for today. We we'll run with it. We we'll run with that. Praise God. Run the race. And, uh, and John, John would have been the apostle. He would have been the disciple. He would have wrote the book of John. He would have wrote the apostles, the epistles. Uh, first, second, third, John, and, and we believe that this is John. No, by the time John comes to be writing this epistle, all the other apostles, most of them are dead. Amen. Kill out Peter. Amen. Crucify Peter. Peter said, you know something? You can kill me, but kill me upside down. I'm going to honor my Lord. Amen. It's not in the Bible, but we believe that. It's, it's traditional. Praise God. They already killed James. And if you remember, Pastor McCullough, it was Peter, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you, James and John. And hell says, look at what I've done to James. Y'all not hearing me. Look at what I've done to Peter. You are next. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you uh, this morning. Somebody, hell has been trying to tell you that you are next, but the devil is a liar. Oh, no, I'm not going yet. Devil, I'm not going down yet. I'm not going that way. You're not going to take me. You're not hearing me before my time. I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to falter. I'm going to fulfill all my appointed days. I'm going to wait. I know you're not hearing me. Oh, my God. Uh Uh-huh. And so he uses preemptive fear, but he didn't remember. He says, here's the, here's the other tradition. He says, I'm not going to kill you, John, like how I killed Peter. I'm not going to, this is the enemy now. The real, uh, the emperor now uh, around that time is Damatian. I think his name is, uh, John was killed by one. Peter was killed by somebody else. Uh, and what the enemy does is that he always has somebody to fight you. Anybody can say amen. Even when you get rid of one somebody, here comes somebody else fighting you. And the enemy, always some kind of enemy trying to fight you, Sister Rodney, you get over this battle and you get over that battle and you get over this battle and here comes hell. I I thought I was done, but here comes hell. Lord, have mercy. And he looks at John and says, John, I'm going to boil you in a a, 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 a cauldron, a vat of boiling oil. It's fear. But what he forgot is that as much as hell can raise up an enemy, Lord, have mercy. Uh, 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 God can deliver. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, as much as hell can fight, uh, God can give a breakthrough. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, as much as hell can put me in a lion's den, uh, God can shut lion's mouth. Uh, preach Pastor Gordon. Uh, as much as can hell uh, can put me in a flaming fire seven times. Hallelujah. Oh, fire can't burn me. 
He, he forgot about that, so he put him in the vat of oil, but God stepped in. Is there anybody in here? God kind of stepped in in, in your life, and you're, and you're here. You've been through some fire. You've been in some oil. Uh, you've been in some hotness. Uh, you've been in some burdens. Uh, you're carrying a weight, uh, but God stepped in, Pastor Mark. Uh, God helped me. God, God, God covered me. God surrounded me, and I'm standing here uh, only because, uh, Sister Anna, of the grace uh, and the mercy of God uh, when the hell tried to take me out uh, look at me devil look I'm still standing uh-huh he's been trying but I'm still standing he's been working but I'm still standing somebody said but pastor don't tempt him tempt the devil I'm not tempting the devil I'm giving glory y'all not hearing me mm. I I I'm telling of the goodness of God y you know why pastor McCallum in the grave, David said, my bones, I cannot praise you from the grave. So I've got to give him the glory while I yet live. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. So he tried to take him out, Sister Rodney. He tried to eliminate him. He put him in the oil. Couldn't kill him. Hell can't kill you. You understand what I'm saying to you? Say amen, somebody hell can't take you. Don't be afraid, he can't take you. Can't, be, can't take you. If he can storm heaven and take back heaven, then he can take you. But as long as God is still on the throne, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. As long as he rules heaven, as long as angels whoop, bow before him, as long as heaven and earth is adoring him, huh? none of hell's angels, armies, uh, fights, warriors, weapons formed uh, against the child of God is going to prosper. Amen. So he tries to kill him and he can't kill him. So he says, you know something, I'm going to put you in exile. I can't kill you. <laughs> can't kill you. I'm going to put you in exile. And the problem is we look at it and we say, well, pastor, he's in exile. You see, God works in mysterious ways. And the thing I like about it, um, Deacon, is that uh, God, will, God will make certain moves. And you may not understand it now, but, but we'll understand it better by and by. Praise God. Uh, God is, the devil was doing a preemptive strike. That's what I call it. Fear is a preemptive strike because you want to do it. You, whatever it is, you want to do it, but you look at it and you say, "My, nah, go down there, no. <laughs> I did that. I do it, you know, Sister Sharon, not doing it. No, sir, I do it, but I not do it. See too much things happen to them. And then they say, God, give me a sign. <laughs> I need a sign, God. <laughs> I need a sign. I need you to show me something and God show you a sign. And I said, God, if it's really you, Lord have mercy. Yeah. <laughs> I need another sign. Confirm it. Praise God. And then you said, let pastor come up here this morning. Y'all not here. Let pastor say something about it. Let them call me. Give me a sign. And God's been speaking. So the hell uses preemptive fear. But God is a proactive God. Hallelujah. Hell is preemptive, but God is proactive. Uh, and what God does is that, praise God, is before hell can see something developing to start to strike at you, God already had a plan for you. Long before hell decided that I'm going to attack Brother Ron because he's moving too quickly in life. God says, I already saw that, son, and I already have a plan for that. I'll see you all later. Lord of mercy. Long before the devil said, you know something, I don't like how you're getting success. Through God, I'm going to strike at you. God said, I already have a plan for that. He's proactive. That's why the lamb deacon could be slain from the foundation of the world. Because God is proactive. Y'all let you know what I'm saying to you. Uh -huh. that, that's, why, that's, why, that's why Abraham could find a ram caught in the thicket. Because God is 
Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Yeah, that, that's right, that's right. That's why the widow woman, she could find a man called Elijah. Why? Because God is proactive. And the other widow woman, she could find another prophet called Elijah that would give her some oil because God touch somebody and tell them God has a plan God has a plan I know it looks like it's not working uh, but God has a plan I know it looks like it's not coming but God has come on sir tell me tell me tell me Genesis 3 15 God has a plan and the plan says I will crush the head Okay, okay, Pastor Mark, you're preaching with me. Do it like Brampton. I will crush the head of the serpent. You know what that means? It means that anything the serpent can come up with, Lord have mercy. Anything the serpent gets in his head about you, you are not hearing what I'm saying to you. Anything he starts to think about you, God says, I already put my foot. Thank you, sir. Praise God. I, I, and so... And so God is moving and God is working and God is planning and, you know, God will work in different ways. Sometimes God will just block a plan and you don't even see it, Brother Kevin. He's just block it. That's what happened in Numbers 23 with Balaam and Balak. They wanted to destroy and defeat the Israelites, the Hebrews, as they were coming through. And, uh, and uh, they got this, this prophet, you know. Not every prophet that call himself prophet is prophet. Working for God. They might have some kind of gift, but they're not all working for God. They might can tell you something, but they're not all working for God. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Don't run after signs and all of these things. Praise God. Run after God. <clears throat> and they said, you know something? We can't stop them. We cannot stop the Hebrews. They're making progress through the desert. They're coming through the, uh, the waters. Can't stop them. So the only way we can stop them is if we curse them in the background. We're not telling them, no, no, we're going to curse them. We're not fighting them man to man. We're going to curse them. They don't even know what's coming for them. You know, hell is sitting down plotting how we can come, from, come against you, but God blocked it. Look at somebody and tell them, I am blessed. I don't care what you say. I am blessed. I don't care how I feel. I am blessed. I don't care what I'm going through. I am blessed. I don't care how it looks. Uh, I am blessed. You know how many things God stopped uh, even this morning. Uh, you know how many of us got out of hell uh, didn't want to get here uh, to get to church to hear the word of God. Uh, you know how many of us uh, the devil would not want to stand and minister the word of God but God blocked it. Uh, God stopped it. Uh, I've got to praise him. Uh, Lord have mercy. I've got to glorify him. I've got to worship him. I've got to exalt him because he blocked certain things and I didn't even see it, Sister Nodia. I don't even know how it happened. I woke up with a blessing. God help me. I woke up and it was there in the morning. I woke up because God who does not sleep or slumber was working. Look at somebody and say he blocked that. Number two, he doesn't always block it, but sometimes he let it come through. Sometimes he let it come through, he doesn't stop it. The plan of the enemy, the weapon forms. And I see the weapon, and it's out there. And I'm nervous, Sister Nordia, because I see a weapon. And sometimes these weapons are bigger than my mind can comprehend. Sometimes I look and I search for a way outside of the problem that I find myself in. And I know it is the weapon of the enemy. But that's when I turn to Isaiah 54 and 17. And somebody said it, that no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, ah, look at somebody and tell them, I'm about to condemn that. I'm about to drop that. I'm about to kill that. I'm about to decree the word of God against every word against my life. I'm about to rise up in the faith and the authority that God has given me. And I'm about to step on the head of the serpent because no weapon. Woo! He 
he said it, so I have to appropriate myself in what God says. And God says, you will see a weapon there. Lord, have mercy. You are going to see it formed. But, but, but it's not going to prosper. It's not going to work. It won't work. They'll put it together. It's going to fall apart. Lord, have mercy. They're going to set it up, but it's going to crumble. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Number two is it will form, but it's not going to prosper. And then another time it will form and it will start to work. And it's working against our sister um, Rodney. And sometimes it looks like we even suffer loss. He said, what about the last pastor? Because I lost some things. I lost some things. I, Lord have mercy. Jesus. Had some heartbreaks. Went through some losses. God have mercy. Uh, but but even, even though we go through some losses, God says, I am the God who will repay. Amen. And he, he, sometimes he repays single. He just gives you back what you lost. That, that's what happened with David. You remember at Ziklag? Y'all yeah, don't remember at Ziklag? Yeah. And David suffered loss. And David went before, I talk about it all the time, y'all know it. David went before the priest and says, bring me the prayer cloth, bring me the effort. And he's showing us when we suffer loss, don't look to the loss. Look to the God who can recover and restore. And sometimes he allows us to restore, to recover everything. I, I'm, I'm telling somebody, you're, you're going to recover it all. Praise God. You're going to recover it all. You're going to get it back. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 You're going to get it back. Thank you, Lord. David encouraged himself. I'm telling you. Lord have mercy. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You will strengthen your heart. Because <clears throat> he'll give you back. Another time, Brother Ronnie says, I'll give you a double. Woo! Yeah. Anybody ready for a double? Yeah. Isaiah says, for your shame, yeah. you shall have a double. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you? And then sometimes he says, I'm not just going to give you a double. I'm going to give you a sevenfold. Lord, have mercy. He says, when the enemy steals from you, he's got to repay it seven times. Uh, I'm about to get back my seven time. Uh, and I'm telling you something. Uh, the longer I'm waiting, uh, the more I want back. Uh, I don't just want it back like that. Uh, I want it plus. Uh, if the world system uh, can cause me to pay interest uh, on a debt that I owe, uh, Lord, have mercy. In the spiritual realm uh, where the book says uh, I've got to get back something uh, I'm getting it back plus uh, I want what I want uh, that was mine uh, I'm going to get it past the Makala and I'm not taking Noah I'm getting it back plus it's coming up uh, it's coming up uh, it's coming up uh, it's coming up uh, uh, in the name of Jesus uh, because his word says it uh, I'm getting it back a hurry up pastor the book then, the second thing, the third thing is that it's a book of hope because God will give you back those things that were lost. And so although we look at it as a book of, of, uh, of apocalyptic nature, when you start to read into the book and you start to appropriate who God really is and you start to realize that God is a good God. Somebody say, yes, he is. Uh, when you realize that God is always good, Sister Elsa, that no matter what you're going through, you realize that God is still good. Uh, even when people wicked, he still let the sun rise. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Even when they're not blessing him, he's still pouring out blessings uh, woo, back upon him. Uh, and you start to appropriate God like Anna was pre, uh, t, um, uh, talking today, she was talking about the grace of God, uh, and, and what I heard when she was when she was uh, uh, when she was talking is that where sin doth abound, uh, grace much more. Uh, what a mighty God He is, Sister Shaw. What a good God He is, uh, a good God that will give you grace. Uh, don't you know He'll give you beauty for ashes uh, and strength uh, and peace uh, and joy uh, and turn things around. Uh, he is a good God. Uh, I'm going. 
going into revelation uh, and I'm getting out of it what God uh, has for me uh, because there's some good stuff in there. Uh, there is hope in there. Uh, there is peace in there. Uh, there is joy in there. Uh, I've got confidence uh, in my God uh, that if he puts it in there, uh, it's going to work together. Oh God, for my good, uh, no matter what I'm going through, uh, uh, Sister Rodney is going to work together. All things, uh, look at somebody and say, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming together for your good. Preach, Pastor G. So you start to read it and then you realize that things that were, uh, that used to, you used to have fear about is actually God saying, grab that, that's yours, praise God. And, and, and things that look scary and has power, God says, I give you power over all mm, the powers of the enemy. And things that you used to back away from, God says, get in there, my son. Uh, you are not alone. Uh, it is not the I, but the Christ uh, that lives in me uh, to will and to do his good works. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so I look at the book with a different light, Pastor McCullough, that God wants to get something to me uh, as much as he's preparing me. Uh, he's saying there is some stuff in here uh, that you need to get. Praise God. Uh, just one more thing before I move on. The interesting thing is that the book is uh, written for everybody, Pastor Mark, for all time. It's for all men, all people, for all time. This book, anybody who's going to go through history, they will be impacted by the end times described in this book. Everybody's going to be impacted by it. You would be forgiven to think that if God was going to do something so important that he would declare it from the mountaintop. I, I mean, the, I mean when, when he gave them the Ten Commandments, it was from the mountain. When he decreed that I am Jireh, Moses was, uh, Abraham was on the mountain. When, 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 uh, when he decreed that I am the God who answers by fire, Elijah was on the mountain, Mount Carmel. When Jesus came and was transfigured, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Jesus was on the mountain. And so there are some great things that happen on the mountain. Lord have mercy. So, so sometimes I need to get up. Y'all not hearing me. Sometimes I need to rise up. Sometimes I need to push up. Sometimes I need to look up. Sometimes I need to climb up. Up to the, look at somebody and tell them I'm going up. Jesus uh, up the mountain uh, it's the rough side of the mountain uh, but I'm going up there anyway to make it in y'all they all don't know these old songs uh, uh, Reverend F.C. Barnes I'm coming up uh, on the rough side uh, of the mountain uh, I'm doing my best but God doesn't bring John in a mountain he puts him on the Isle of Patmos he puts him in exile. He puts him out there by himself. The book, which is so important for everybody to hear this, he says, I'm going to let you preach it in exile. It's important to understand that he's far away from everybody, Pastor Mark, and yet still he's closest to God. <laughs> Sister Makala, he's outside, not living with all the disciples. He don't, doesn't have the Jerusalem council. He doesn't have the believers, the brethren. Nobody cooking to him and carrying him something. And say, can I stop by? I was passing by. I'm getting something this evening. <laughs> Nobody to support him, to pray for him, to lift him up, Sister Sharon. But he's in the spirit. Woo, Jesus. Uh, in exile, but I'm in the spirit. Uh, you see, when I'm in the spirit, I don't care where I am. Uh, I don't care how far I am. Uh, I don't care how far out I am. Uh, I'm in the spirit. God is talking to me because I'm in the spirit. I've got what I need uh, because I'm in the spirit. Pastor Mark uh, was saying there is liberty when you're in the spirit. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I've got God uh, and I'm with him uh, in the spirit outside on the realm but I'm in the spirit uh, don't have all that I want in life right now uh, but God help me I've got the spirit uh, 
preach Pastor Gordon. Uh, you see, the Spirit of God is the most important thing uh, that we need to ensure that we have with us. Uh, even Jesus said it. Uh, he said, I cannot stay with you. Uh, I have to go away. Uh, why, Jesus? Uh, if I don't go away, uh, you're not going to get the Spirit. Uh, I've got to take the Spirit with me. Uh, I've got to have the Spirit leading me. Uh, I've got to have the guidance of the Spirit. Uh, when I'm in the presence uh, of God, uh, His Spirit is working in me uh, and He's telling me how to move. Uh, he's telling me how to shift. Uh, he's telling me how to walk. Uh, he's telling me when to stop. Uh, he's telling me when to stand up uh, and when to sit down. Uh, I've got the Spirit of God. Uh, he's my author. He's my director. He's my commander. He's my everything. Uh, he's my leader. He's showing me everything that I should do uh, at this point in time uh, because I've got the spirit of God don't feel sorry for John uh, although he's out there uh, although they throw him in the oil uh, because the man got the spirit uh, Lord of mercy I ain't got much money right now uh, but you know something uh, I'll see you all later I've got some problems swirling around uh, but you know something uh, I've got the spirit uh, I'm working on some things uh, in my life uh, but those will work out why pastor because you've got the spirit I'm in the spirit on the Lord's day. I don't have it all, but I got the spirit. I notice if you read it in King James, I don't know what the other translation says, but if you read it in King James, it says capital S. <laughs> yeah, capital S. Not any old spirit is going to do. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. Not this spirit, that spirit, them spirit. You have all kind of spirit. And a lot of people, Sister Nordia, they're in all kind of spirit these days. I need the Holy Spirit. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I need the one that was poured out. Uh, I need the one from Pentecost. Uh, I need the one that come down with fire and cloven tongues. Uh, I need that spirit. To be leading me. All kind of spirit out there telling people all kind of things. Do this and do that. Why you did that? I just felt like doing it. The devil is a liar. Amen. Praise God. And so he's, he's outside. But when you have the spirit of God, God takes this message from John in exile. And it moves it from exile into the mainstream. You know, when you have the spirit of God, God will take what you're doing in your little corner. <laughs> when nobody don't hear about you, nobody knows you, nobody sees you, nobody talking about you, and you wonder, you say to yourself, anybody remember me? <laughs> you all not hearing what I'm saying to you? And you say, Pastor Marka, auntie them, you know, papa them, you don't hear from nobody, you're sitting down there like a corner, but, but as long as you have the spirit of God, Sister Tanya, God will take your work from the back bench and put it in the mainstream yeah. how does he get from exile i don't know how the word gets from exile but the spirit does yeah. <laughs> Woo, yeah. jesus i have to hurry up i have to hurry up but y'all used to me by now and you know something i don't see sister rodney so long praise god i have to keep her <laughs> as long as i can so he's in the spirit <clears throat> and he does three things three three things and then i'm done God speaks to him and he says, this is the outline for the scripture, for the, for the book. Number one, I'll tell you what I saw of Jesus. He says, I saw Jesus and that did something. And then he said, I saw some current events. I saw what was happening right now and that did something. And then after he saw Jesus and he saw the current events, he said, I saw the future. Yeah. You can't see the future before you see Jesus. And before you see yourself right now, right here, and you can't see who you really are unless you see Jesus. Should I say it again? I can't get into my promise, my tomorrow, until I see my right now. <clears throat> and I can't fully understand uh, what I'm going through right now and what I should do uh, until I see Jesus. 
John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He says, I was in exile. And he says, I was there. I beheld the word of God. And I was here for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, I was in the spirit and I saw Jesus. Look at somebody and say, I saw the Lord. That's what Isaiah said. I saw the Lord. If I need to see anything, Lord have mercy. You know, y'all look so beautiful. Full of handsome and lovely. I'm glad to see you. Uh, but if I came here and did not see Jesus, uh, I would have missed everything. I'll see you later. I came uh, to see Jesus. Uh, I came uh, to hear Jesus. Uh, I want to know what Jesus is saying uh, right now. Uh, please give me Jesus. Uh, you all look good. Uh, you all can sing. Uh, you all can preach. Uh, you all can speak. Uh, I don't want to see that. Uh, I came to see my Jesus, uh, I want to behold him, uh, to look upon his face, uh, there to sing forever uh, of his amazing grace. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Please give me Jesus. It's important, Mother Wilson, because the problem is that John had walked with Jesus all his life. Let's say it's the same John. And, and, and yet still he says, I got a revelation. I wonder if you miss it. I, I, I was walking with Jesus all my life. I, I wrote the book called John. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I, I was an apostle with Jesus. I was part of inner circle. I was Peter James. I saw him transfigured. I was there in the garden, but yet still a Lord of mercy. When I'm in the spirit, I see a different. I, I, I outran Peter to the tomb. I wrote some books about him. I helped set up the early church. But when I got in the spirit, I see a different. He would have known him. He would have known him in the natural. But the Jesus, there is a Jesus that you, that you hear about, that they teach about. And they talk about what would Jesus do. That's one kind of Jesus. One kind of Jesus. They say, Jesus, love your neighbor. And Jesus says this and Jesus says that. But, but John says, this Jesus is different. He says, when I beheld him, he says, on the Lord's day, let me, let me, let me go to... He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me, verse 10, a great voice as of a trumpet saying, red letter, I am Alpha and Omega, first and last. I, I know you're Jesus. You don't know me like this. Praise God. What you see, John, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches in Asia, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, Pastor Mark, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Never seen Jesus like this. Y'all not hearing me. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, uh, one look like uh, mm -hmm, unto the son of man uh, I've seen him uh, but I've never seen him like this uh, clothed with a garment down to the foot uh, and girt about with the pops uh, with a golden girdle uh, his head uh, Lord have mercy oh and his ears uh, were white like wool, uh, as white as snow. Uh, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, uh, as if they burned in a furnace. Uh, and his voice uh, as the sound uh, of many waters. Uh, and he had uh, in his right hand uh, seven stars, uh, and out of his mouth uh, went a two-edged sword, uh, and his countenance, uh, woo, Jesus! was as the sun shining in his strength. John Pastor Makala said, I know Jesus. I walk with him. But when I saw this Jesus, Brother Ron, when I was in the spirit, I fell <laughs> as dead. Let, let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This God that we serve is not a joke. This God is not a play God. I know he's gentle. 
I know he's loving. I know he's gracious. I know he's merciful. But this is still God. Y'all not hearing me? They still bow before him. They still answer to his will. He still holds all power. Daniel, in Daniel 9 and 10, when he was praying and he was about to repent, he said, oh, dreadful, you are the awesome and dreadful God. Let me tell you something. When God gets ready, he is awesome and dreadful and terrible God all at once. <laughs> Praise God. And John says, when I, when I saw him, when I saw his beauty, Lord have mercy. It, it is like, it's like when I saw him, I, I have to leave sin. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. When I saw him, I have to put down, close the computer screen, preach Pastor God. When, when, when I see him, I have to turn off the phone. I, I have to get off of TikTok. I have to get off of Twitter. I have to get off of Instagram. I can't read that anymore. Those songs, I can't listen. I saw Jesus uh, brother Josh in the spirit a different Jesus when we see Jesus it changes us some of us need a change and when we get a revelation Pastor McCullough we see our, our, when we say, get a revelation of Jesus it brings a change can't stay the same. Can't stay the same, brother Ron. Don't listen to this Jesus that they're telling you about. Talking about dead, he's dead. God's not dead. He's very much alive. John says, I saw him. I beheld him. And I looked at him. And I fell as dead. The first thing we need to realize as we look for strength is that we have to see Jesus. If I don't see Jesus, I won't see me. If I don't see who God is, I won't see me. Everybody has an interpretation of who they are. All the church, Sister Ella, Ellie, preach with me every Sunday. Praise God. Last week she was waving at me. <laughs> uh, everybody has this interpretation. Everybody's preaching a message. Everybody's telling you something. Everybody's telling you you can't stand for that. And everybody's telling you be who you are and be who you're supposed to be and all of these kinds of things. Let me tell you something. You'll never be who you are unless you see Jesus. I've got to go back to the maker. I've got to go back to the creator. I've got to go back to the perfect God. I've got to go back to the Adonai. I've got to go back to the king of kings. I've got to go back to the one who is perfect himself. Before I can see perfection in me. And so he speaks and he says, I saw Jesus. The next thing that I realized, I'm going to hurry up, y'all. Y'all, I'm going to hurry up. Three things. The next thing that he see, he said, I saw Jesus. The next thing that he saw was, he saw what was happening in the current time. And Jesus says, now that you have seen me, I'm going to give you an a, a, a indication of what the current state is. He's talking about the current state of the church. And he says, I need you to write to all of these churches. I need you to tell them that there is something going on but notice you can't get an assessment of what is wrong unless you get to and I see what Jesus who Jesus really is are you hearing what I'm saying to you we cannot do any kind of writing of wrongs of changing of manipulation of corrections until and unless I see Jesus I cannot get up here and preach unless I see Jesus, you don't want it because I'm coming from me and you don't want me. You never came for me. They love me, no, but they never came for me. Preach, Pastor God. Say amen, no man. Y'all making them. They love my body, no. Come on, somebody. But, but, they, but they, I'm joking. But, but you came to see Jesus and before, before, before any word comes out, I've got to see what Jesus is saying. And so this is an indication of God showing us and here and now. He has to show us himself before we can see what needs to be changed inside of us. And so I'm not looking at the definition that comes from people, from a psychologist, a psychiatrist, 
Not even what mommy or daddy says, unless they're hearing from God. Every now and then I need to go back and check with the Lord and say, God, what's wrong? And David looked at, David looked at his situation in, in the situation with Bathsheba. And he said, from himself, the man that has done this shall surely die. Because that was coming from him. But when he heard from God, he changed his tune. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. And he says, create in me, yes, a clean heart. Woo! Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Because he saw Jesus, he heard what was going on. Hallelujah. A lot of us are sitting on our high horse. Sitting on our throne. Sitting up there, and we haven't seen Jesus. Uh, but I tell you something, the minute we see Jesus, uh, we get off of that thing and we get down on our knees uh, and say, wash me with his supper uh, and I shall be clean. Uh, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Uh, I need you, Jesus. Uh, I need the blood of Jesus. Uh, when we see Jesus, uh, we get a transformation of who I am. We, we want to get to what's coming. I want to get to the future, Sister Nordia. I want to get to my prophecy. I want to get to the good that God has for me. But God says there is a progression. You've got to see me first. When you see me, you've got to see you then. Let me show you you. And then I want to change some things in you. So that when I get ready, I set you up. To reign with me. So he talks to the churches and he says, write to these churches, seven of them. And it's an indication for us. Number one, Ephesus, he says, he says, you work hard. Anybody work hard? He says, you persevere. He says, you have doctrinal purity. But guess what? You don't love me like how you used to love me. Who am I talking to? Lord of mercy. You used to love me more than this. You forgot your first love. You forgot your zeal. Number two, he says, repent because you forgot your first love. Isn't it interesting? God says, the thing I need from you is love, passion, a desire for me. Hello. I'm talking to the church. God says, I want desire. Passion. Number two, Smyrna tells us that it's important for us to retain our faithfulness during persecution. I was talking about this. Hell will just throw something in front of your sister Makala. Hell, <laughs> hell's trying to get you to say something, do something, give up. But, but Smyrna was faithful during persecution and even poverty. But he says, remain steadfast. And persevere through trials. He said, when God went, he says, persevere. Praise God. He said, how God, how? He says, persevere. He says, why God, why? He just says, persevere. He says, I don't understand it, but God says, persevere. He says, push through. Look at somebody and say, push. He said, don't give up. He said, hold on. When you can't walk, you stand. And having done all, oh, stand therefore. Number three, Pergamum, where applauded, was applauded rather for holding fast to Christ's name and not denying the faith. But he warns them, Christ does, that not everyone that calls themselves a teacher. We have all of them on YouTube now, Pastor Man. All different ones. Facebook, YouTube, and, Twitter, and um, TikTok now is the big one. That some of us not on TikTok, but the kids are out there. And they're talking to them, Sister Tanya. And he says, not everybody, you love God, you want to learn more, but not everybody that say that they're teaching you about God is a real teacher, Sister Elsa. He says, don't let false teachers sway you. Don't let them tell you something that sounds right. He says, search the scriptures and try the spirits. Praise God. He says, look for it for yourself. He says, I've given you something in here. Read it for yourself. And God says, I give you a relationship with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Don't let because somebody else going there, you go there. Because somebody else going down, you go down. No, the devil is a liar. I'll say, uh, uh, my young companion, fare thee well. I will not go with you to hell. Where was I? Number four, Theatara. The church is commanded, commended for their love, their faith, their service, their patience, endurance, but they're criticized for, for tolerating a false prophetess. That's the next thing. You have false teachers and you have false prophets. Say amen. Praise God. They're urged to repent and reject her teachings. Says she's a whore. I give her space to repent. But well, she did not repent. Sorry, this number five. The church is criticized for being spiritually dead. Lord have mercy. They had a reputation for being alive. Let me tell you something, <laughs> Ellie. Being alive is not dependent on the energy that we display. Being alive is dependent on the connection, the spiritual connection that we have with God. Right? That's why Jesus says, the Lord is a spirit. And they that worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. You might not be able to move as fast as some of us can move. But have a spiritual aliveness. And you're looking at some of these young people and say, you're not a joke. You see if me didn't have the strength what I want to have. I run around the church. The fire that I feel in me. <laughs> because I have the spirit of God. I feel alive. Quickened. Lifting me up, um, brother Ron. You know, sometimes you, you have to do things. Sometimes I have to preach. And you know, you're tired, really, really tired that day for whatever reason. You know, sometimes you have a rough night. Sometimes you had a rough week. Sometimes you have to do something today. Whatever the case may be. But I tell you something. E even though you come up here and you're tired and sometimes the word don't flow, the fire inside is like it's shut up in your bones. Praise God. And you don't know. I say, I've got to finish this thing. I've got to run this race. I've got to hold on. I've got to get through this. There's a quickening spirit. Hallelujah. That brings you alive. Number six, Philadelphia is the church of love and brotherly kindness. The church is commended for their faithfulness and obedience to Christ and promised that God is going to open a door. I thought you would say amen. <laughs> that no man can shut. And he's going to shut doors that no man can open. Up. He says, just stick close to me. I'll open doors for you. And then number seven, Laodicea is criticized because they're lukewarm. The lukewarm, I say. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise, the Lord praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, I'm joking. But the lukewarm in their attitude, the lukewarm in their actions, the lukewarm in everything that they do. You don't have to be jumping on, on fire all the time, but if you're doing something for the Lord, it has to be with some fire. Amen. You don't have to make a lot of noise, but there's got to be some passion in terms of what you're doing for God. I, I watch them, you know, Pastor Mark. I used to go to the reggae boys match, you know, Pastor Mark. And I see them, Sister Sharon, reggae boys, that's our football team in Jamaica. And they qualified for World Cup France 98. The Trinidad College qualified too after they did. And I used to go to the match. And, and you see when they qualified, all of the people them. Yeah, and they have this fire. When we're in the clubs, when we're out there, we have this fire for what we're doing. And Jesus says, I need to see that fire for me. Hallelujah. I need the same fire for the work of God, for the word of God, for the things that belong to me. Hallelujah. None of those matches I can fill me like how Jesus can fill me. Lord, have mercy. 
None of those things can satisfy her. Those things leave me hungry. They leave me thirsty. I have to go back again and do it again and do it again and I'm still not satisfied. Her. But my Jesus has satisfied her, my thirsty soul. Her. I've got to bless him her, with everything that is within me. Her. I've got to open up her, and I've got to give him praise her, and I've got to serve him her, with all of my beans. Her. There's got to be some fire in my life. I'm almost done. I'm done now. <laughs> but uh, after we go through all the changes, after we go through the churches, he starts to write to John. He wraps up in chapter 3, chapter 4, John writes, and he's done with the churches, and he says, repent, because I'm coming quickly. And then he moves from the now, and he moves into the then. Praise God. He moves from what's happening now, and he says, this is what's coming up next. Praise God. He moves from what's going on in your life right now, and he says, this is what I'm about to do in your life coming up. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you? But when God sees me, when he reveals himself, when I see him, uh, and I look in his beautiful face, uh, and then he shows me certain things in me, in my life. He shows me who I am. Uh, he shows me then where he wants to take me. He says, this is your now right now. Who am I talking to? He says, this is where you are right now. Huh? But he says, I'm showing you where I'm about to take you. God have mercy. And then John starts to write and he opens up. Uh, let me tell you something. One chapter on seeing Jesus. Uh, two or three chapters about ourselves. Uh, but when he starts to tell me about the future, he gets all the way down to chapter 21. Uh, I'll see you all later. See, I have not seen. Uh, I'll see you all later. And ear has not heard. Uh, neither has it entered uh, into the hearts of man. Uh, the things past the mark that God uh, has prepared for them uh, that love him. Uh, but John said, I'm in the spirit. Uh, why? Because God said, uh, I will reveal it uh, unto your spirit. Uh, and God has some revelation. Uh, God has some things uh, that will blow your mind. Uh, John started writing uh, and he said, I beheld uh, the 24 elders uh, around the throne uh, and they fell down on their faces uh, and they cried. Uh, You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. This is the beauty and the splendor. John started to write uh, and he said I saw the glassy throne uh, round about him. Uh, John started to write uh, and he said I beheld uh, from every nation Sister Makala, kindred and tongue. Uh, they came before the Lama and they cried worthy who oh, Jesus uh, is the Lama that was slain. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, I'm gonna be there uh, when they crown him Lord. Uh, God help me. My future is brighter. My future is confident. Uh, I got some courage uh, stepping into tomorrow because I'm about to see uh, my Jesus uh, face to face. Uh, John said uh, this is the marriage supper of the Lama uh, but nothing could happen uh, until I get there. Uh, nothing can happen uh, until the saints get there uh, because the bride of Christ uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you we've got to appear uh, in robes uh, of white uh, ready for my Jesus It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. A wonderful day is coming. A glorious day is coming. A brighter day is coming. I'm preaching in old school like the old time pastors. When we all get to heaven, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? When I see Jesus face to face, cast all the crowns before my Jesus, bow down on my knees and exalt him. Sister Phillips, it says, you said, Pastor, I've lost. He says, God shall wipe away, I'll see you later. All the tears from their eye. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more weeping. Oh, yes. Haley, Revelation 21 verse 4 and God shall wipe away all tears 
from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crime, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Things I used to know, things I used to go through, things I used to face, people that used to handle me away, y'all not talking back to me. Things that was a heartache, how they used to treat you, how they used to handle you, what you're going through right now, all the former things. He says, right, John, I'm finished. Because these words, hallelujah, are faithful and true. When he gets there, Brother Ron, he says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Sometimes I feel like I need a new foot, I need a new hand. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I need a new back, you know. I have to call Sister Lisa for this one that I have. I'll see you later. Uh, uh, but, but God says there is a new heaven and a new earth. Former things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Praise God. <laughs> beautiful city of God. <laughs> Praise God. The one thing that John says in the book is that he saw this beautiful heaven that's prepared for everybody. He says, this is prepared for you. God, God, Jesus says, I've gone to prepare a place. But John says, I also saw hell. He says, I saw death. So he said, I saw the lake of fire cast into hell. He says, I saw those angels that had left their first estate Says, I saw them cast into the lake of fire. Said, I saw great and small standing before God. Hallelujah. And he says, everyone whose name, hallelujah, was not found, praise God, written in the Lamb's book of life. They were cast into the lake of fire. That's not for you. It's not for me. It's not for us. Praise God. Name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Stand to your feet. If you're here this morning and your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, praise God. If you're here this morning and you're not sure that you're sure that you're sure that this book, hallelujah, that shall surely come to pass, doesn't cover you for the future. Get all you can get now. Live your life now. Praise God. Joy yourself. The Bible says God gives us all things richly to enjoy. Pastor not coming against that. He says all things are for your sakes. So Paul says all things are for your sakes. Do great things in life. But remember that day is coming for sure.